Hi friends, welcome to Classic Education YouTube channel. Again, today we are ready to learn something new. Today we are going to learn about the our freedom struggle. There are various kinds of people who have contributed their best to give us the gift called the freedom. Today, if we are breathing the air of freedom and liberty, that is because of the greatest sacrifices made by the national heroes and some of the unsung heroes also. So today we are going to learn about such unsung hero or the hero who is not heard much. Okay, That hero is none other than the Alluri Sita Ramaraju. Today we are going to learn about the Alluri Sita Ramaraju and the rebellion which was led by him that is called as the Rampa Rebellion. Okay, We are going to learn about the Rampa Rebellion and the associated figure called the Alluri Sita Ramaraju. Now why this rebellion or Alluri Sita Ramaraju was in news? Because the recently the Prime Minister of India on July 4th, he inaugurated uh, or he unveiled one statue called the Allah Alluri Sita Rama uh, Raju statue. The, it, it was you know, located in the <coughs> Andhra Pradesh. So there is a location Bhimavaram in that district place. The Prime Minister unveiled a statue called the Alluri Sita Rama Raju. So because of that, the Alluri Sita Rama Raju was in news. Along with this, uh, way back in the 2022 itself, very recently, the government of Andhra Pradesh, it also carved out one new district called Alluri Sita Ramaraju district. This district was carved out of the erstwhile Vishakapatnam district, right? Vishakapatnam district was bifurcated into Alluri Sita Ramaraju district and older Vishakapatnam. Because of these two events, Alluri Sita Ramaraju and the Rampa rebellion were in news. And also, this year we are celebrating the 125th year of the uh, birth anniversary of the Alluri Sita Ramaraju. Now, let's go into details of the Alluri Sita Ramaraju. Who is this figure? Why he is in news? What are his contributions? Let us study about that. He is a revolutionary freedom fighter. That means he believed in the extreme ideas to get the freedom. See, in our freedom struggle, we have various kinds of people prominent one now uh, prominent ones are the moderates and the extremists along with them uh, along with these people there is one more category called the revolutionaries like bhagat singh right see this Ra sita ramaraju belongs to the category of revolutionary that means he wanted to gain the freedom through fierce fighting right he is the revolutionary freedom fighter he rebelled against the british in response to the 1982 madras forests act so this is a very serious legislation or wrongful legislation made by the British people. The tribal people were facing the problem because of this act. This act became the trigger point for the Alluri Sita Ram Raju to wage the you know a struggle against the British people. He led the Rampa rebellion. Yes, we will discuss about this rebellion in detail in the subsequent slide. Just no, no. Now, for time being, you just know that the Rampa rebellion was led by the Alluri Sita Ramaraju. This rebellion is also called as the Manyam rebellion. Manyam rebellion or the Rampa rebellion. This rebellion took place in the year 1922. It lasted for two years from 1922 to 1924. There was a fierce battle between the tribal people in the southern region and the British. Then this Sita Ram engaged in the guerrilla campaigns. You know the very well-known figure associated with the guerrilla warfare that is Shivaji Maharaj. Shivaji Maharaj is very well known for his guerrilla tactics. This Alluri Sita Ramaraju also, he employed the guerrilla tactics to fight against the British people in the border regions of the Madras Presidency. You know very well that the India during the British period, it was, it was having the four major presidencies called the Madras Presidency, Bo Bombay Presidency, Bengal Presidency, right? See this, one of the such presidency was Madras Presidency. This rebellion took place in the border regions of the Madras Presidency. That means this today's Vishakapatnam or Alluri Sitaramaraju district, they are in the border regions of the Madras Presidency or this Madras Presidency was bifurcated into Andhra Pradesh and some of the parts of the Madras Presidency went to the Karnataka, right? In this border area, this 
Al uh, Sita Ramaraj was very active. He was also uh, known as Manyam Virudu. Okay, this Sita Ramaraj is also called as the Manyam Virudu because of the his hero heroic actions, because of his dominance in the uh, guerrilla warfare, because of his major area of activity in the jungles or the forests. Because of that, he is you know uh, regarded as the Manyam Virudu or the hero of the jungle. Then he was active during the non-cooperation movement. I said this Rampa rebellion took place in the year 1922 and it lasted till the 1924. If you look into the modern India's freedom struggle, this you know time period correlates with the non-cooperation movement which was launched by the Mahatma Gandhi ji. Right? Non-cooperation movement was going on. At the same time, the Rampa rebellion was also going on. This non-cooperation movement was by the mainstream people, but the Rampa rebellion was being fought or it was associated with the uh, tribal people. The major aim of this Sita Ramaraju was to expel the British from the Eastern Ghats. Right? This Vishakapatnam or Madras Presidency, it harbors the Eastern Ghats part of East, eastern guards is located in the madras Pres then the president uh, madras presidency right see major aim of this sita ramaraju was to expel the british or to throw out the british from this region it was his major aim okay this is all about the sita ramaraju now let's look into the earlier life how was the early life of this sita ramaraju and why he became the freedom fighter he initially he was dropped out of the college yes see he you know for your information he was he died at the age of 27 but before 27 he you know contributed too much to the india but he joined uh, schools right but when he was 15 year old he was struggling in his studies right he he was going to the school but by the he, by the time he turned 18 years he was turned out uh, i mean dropped out of the college he discontinued his studies right then but though he discontinued his studies academically or in the schools he continued he pursued his hobbies he became master in the literature he became the master in the literature of telugu sanskrit and hindi and the english languages see though he is you know not going to the school but he is gaining some useful knowledge by studying the literatures of the telugu language sanskrit language hindi language and the english languages now he took the particular interest in the astrology herbalism palmistry and the equestrian equestrianism that means astrology means you know it very well the, uh, that the study of you know uh, stars and the planets and their situations and the impact of the location of the stars and the planets on the human beings that is the astrology herbalism means it is the study of medicinal plants right palmistry means you know uh, predicting the uh, person's future by looking into the palm of uh, palm of that person and equestrianism that means horse riding gaining the skill in the horse riding that is equestrianism this p figure this raju he got the mastery in these subjects also he had the immense interest in uh, these uh, subjects also but he became a sannyasi at the age of 18 this is very very interesting right i said he died at the age of 27 but he became uh, sannyasi at the age of 18 he had lot of you know leanings towards the spiritualism in his life but he travels extensively before you know after turning into the sannyasi he travels extensively across the country to know the situation in the country actually he was visiting the various you know uh, pilgrims like the uh, origin points of the some major rivers like the Godavari and the Ganga the origin point of Godavari is the Nasik district and the origin point of Ganga is the Gangotri this Sita Ramaraju went there and he paid his obeisance uh, to these gods go, river gods then during his travels in the country he met revolutionaries in the Chittagang Chittagang is located in the west today's West Bengal when he was traveling he was visiting various places along with the visiting the places he was meeting the people and he was understanding the reality of the people the reality of the british rule and the oppressions you know created by the british and the indian people when he was traveling he became more and more sensitive towards the causes or the towards the problems of the people in the region in the different regions right he met uh, the 
revolutionaries in the Chittagang. Can you name the major revolutionary associated with the Chittagang armory ride? Can you comment that you know name in the comment box? Okay. Now he saw the socio-economic conditions of the people. As I said, when he was extensively traveling, he came across the socio-economic conditions of the people of the different regions, and he, particularly he saw severely he was severely appalled and decided to build a movement for their independence from the British rule. He understood that the various socio-economic conditions that were you know uh, different difficult situations being faced by the people are because of the oppressive British rule, and he decides to create a movement. He he decides to bring the freedom to the people and he decides to expel out the British from the Indian soil, especially in the southern region that is from the eastern Ghats. Now, he was particularly moved by seeing the hardships of the Koyas. Koyas, again, this is a tribal group in the southern uh, region. The, he was particularly moved. I mean, the situations or the difficulties faced by the Koya tribal people particularly impacted the mind of the Sita Ramaraju. But finally, after extensive traveling across the country, he settles down in the Papi Hills. Papi Hills again in the southern region, in the Vishakapatnam district in today's, uh, sorry, in the today's Godavari district, he settles down because he chooses this location because of the large density of the tribal people. He wanted to associated, associate himself with the tribal people. He recognizes that there is a lot of population of the tribal people in the uh, Papi Hills of in the present Godavari districts and he settles there and he starts to hear the difficulties of the people and he builds the movement here from this point okay now he becomes the messiah what what is the meaning of messiah that he he becomes the problem solver i said he received the sannyasi uh, principles at the age of 18 but from 18 years onwards he, uh, not only 18 years onwards but before that he was meditating he was contemplating on himself he was you know otherworldly interested in in otherworldly things right because of his such you know association with the uh, spiritualism he gains moral stature and the spiritual powers among the people people will start to respect him because of his behavior because of his you know uh, social causes people start to respect him he gained a lot of reputation among the tribal people That's because he was staying in the tribal areas he gains the reputation of the tribal people in this way he becomes the major figure in the region and he attains the status of messianic status that means he becomes the messiah or he becomes the problem solver he becomes the panacea for the problems of the people in the region but he was majorly concerned with the christian machineries that means these british people along with the you know having the political powers they also include influencing the minds of the people by converting the regional native people into another religion that means these christian machineries along with providing the education they were also converting the Indian people, especially the tribal people into the Christianity. This act of the Christian missionaries, you know, created a lot of disturbance in the mind of the Aluri Sitaram Raju and he decides and he considers this, you know, convergence as the new form of imperialism. That means the British people, they are again imposing their imperialistic power on the minds of the people. Then he decides to throw them, throw these people away from the region. Now, you know, being the messiah now he transforms himself into the leader or the mass leader in the region right he started to organize and educate the tribal people people about their rights and the he he you know he educated tribal people about their rights and prepared them for the fight now after associating himself with the people he recognizes what the rights these people enjoy. See, they have the rights to the forest produce. They have the right to the free life. They have right over their natural resources, right? But these rights were being curbed by the British people. Now, this Sita Ramaraju educates the people in the region against the oppressions and the tyranny of the British Raj. Okay. Now, during the forest terrains, he gained extensive knowledge of the geographical features which helped him in the future as the guerrilla warfare tactician see he was extensively traveling i said he was the expert in the equestrianism that means horse riding skills how when he was riding the horses in the 
region he gained all the geographical knowledge various terrains in the region this helped him to become the guerrilla tactician when the british authority authorities confiscated their ancestral properties the koya tribal people brothers see this is very important fact there are two brothers called mallam dora and ghantam dora these are the two tribal people who they belong to the koya tribe these koya tribal brothers now they will associate themselves with the sita rama raju because these people were affected these dora brothers they were affected by the confiscation of their property by the british people okay they become they become the lieutenants of the sita rama raju then oppressive practices of the british continued see they were oppressing the tribal people they were violating the human rights they were forcefully imposing their religion on them uh, on the tribal people they were over exploiting the resources like the forests and the forest produ uh, produce by you know uh, making more and more stringent laws the british people were you know making the tribal people to go out of their native places in this way they were british people were you know impacting the lives of the people they were oppressing the people when the oppression increased then it becomes very important for the leader like the alluri sitarama raju to wage the war against the british people right then re rebel rebellion becomes the last resort that is the only available option for these people now now sitarama raju becomes the only leader for the tribal people to launch such a rebellion okay now let's come to the rampa rebellion or manyam uprising it is called as the manyam uprising or the rampa rebellion as i said it took place in the year 1922 and it lasted up to 1924 okay but what are the reasons for this there are two prominent reasons that led to this rebellion they are passing of the madras forest act in the 1882 and emasculation of the hereditary role of the muttadars this is very important these are the hereditary rulers or the hereditary tax collectors in the southern region they are called as the muttadars and these muttadars were you know uh, made or they were made powerless this is one reason another reason was the madras forest act in the 80, in the year 1882 see let us look into the madras forest act what are its provisions this forest act in the 1882 it was an attempt by the british people to exploit the economic value of the wooded areas see 1882 means the railways were being just introduced in the india 1853 they introduced the railways they wanted the wood for the railway tracks they wanted to construct various factories they wanted the wood for other uh, industries also see somehow they wanted to exploit the economic value of the forest resource see through this act they achieved their objective then these people or this act put restrictions on the free movement of the tribal people in the forests because tribal people they were naturally associated with the nature they were associated with the forest and the wildlife there was no Uh, difficulty between the elements and the you uh, know these human beings to live there they were harmoniously living and there was a lot of cooperation between the wildlife and the tribal people but now what happens by passing this act this act british made the tribal people to go out of the uh, their native places these tribal people had to move out of their location then this act prevented the tribes from engaging in their traditional podu agricultural system this is very important podu agricultural system that means this is a traditional form of agriculture this is nothing but the shifting cultivation that means these tribal people they will cultivate a particular patch of land in the forest area they will cultivate that land till the fertility of the soil is lost once the soil fertility is is lost they will again shift their location and they will you know cultivate the crops somewhere else this is called as the shifting cultivation it is locally called as the podu agricultural practice in the andhra pradesh right these people tribal people thought that their podu agricultural system will be affected then what were the major apprehensions of the people or why the people were uh, worrying their major worry was they had to face the starvation 
right once these tribal people were expelled out of their location they are not skilled to do job in factories like the british factories they do not have much of the other skills to work in other areas of the mainstream uh, life of the people right because of that they thought that they would face the starvation because of lack of you know agricultural system and because of lack of skills they thought they would starve the uh, starve because of the starvation and they also thought that they would engage in the demeaning all those foreign and exploitative coolie system this is very important coolie system this was you know system introduced by the british people these you know tribal people had to work if they were thrown out of their location they had to work as the coolies in the works or the projects of the british people especially in the road construction or in the laying of the railway lines or other uh, electric electricity lines so in such you know projects they would have to work as the coolie system these two starvation and the coolie system became the major cause of worry for these tribal people so because of this now the it becomes very compulsive for the tribal people to wage the war against the british people this is one reason this madras president sorry madras forest act of 1882 is the one reason and second reason is the abolition of hereditary role of muttadars these muttadars they were the tax collectors they were residing in the hilly areas they were nothing but the tribal people only but the rajas or the kings were ruling in the various provinces in the plain areas these muttadars they were acting as the link between the tribal people and the authority or the king in the plain area these muttadars they were collecting the tax from the tribal people and they were submitting this collected tax to the raja in that way their role was you know very powerful they were gaining or they had the some status social status better to social status in the society right but these british people they abolished this hereditary role of muttadars now these muttadars they were feeling that yes their power is gone now they have also become the puppets in the hands of the british people now they also you know think to wage the war against the british people these are the two very very important reasons that led to the rampa rebellion or manyam rebellion right but sita ram raju uses both of these causes very very well these two reasons became very powerful for the uh, uh, sita ram raju then the cultivators that is nothing but the tribal people right and the tax collectors that is nothing but the muttadars who once would have been in opposition to each other now these were in opposition side because these tax collectors are the muttadars they were collecting the taxes from these cultivators that that is the tribal people that means these muttadars were in exercising power over the tribal people they were on opposite side of the power but now both of these people will collaborate to launch you know uh, rebellion okay this raju harnessed this discontent of the tribal people and the grievances of those muttadars right now these uh, you know opposite people will unite together they will collaborate with the sita ram raju and the rebellion becomes the reality now now i said this non cooperation movement was going on this was launched by the mahatma gandhi ji but this movement has also you know impact on the rampa rebellion in what way this rampa rebellion is influenced by the uh, non cooperation movement alluri sitaram raju adopted the aspects from the non cooperation movement this non cooperation movement as they as the name itself suggests this is the non cooperation that means the indian should not cooperate with the british people in all their you know aspects of the governance the indian people were you know working in the judicial system they were working as the tahsildars they were working as the revenue officers in various positions indians were employed in the british government in uh, which was in the india but the, because of the non cooperation movement the gandhi ji say uh, ask the people to leave the jobs they he will ask the lawyers to give up their you know profession he asks other you know government authorities who were indians they to give up their profession see in that way he gave the clarion call for the indian people to not not to cooperate with the british people but this is the same principle was adopted by the sita ram raju also in the rampa rebellion he promoted the temperance of the movement see 
this is a very good tactic tactic of uh, tactic of the mahatma gandhi ji that whenever the movement was going out of the control he was withdrawing back that movement and he, he maintained the peace and he calmed down the people's mind but in the in the same way the rampa rebellion or the aluri sitarama raju he promoted the temperance of the movement he maintained uh, i mean he promoted or he inspired the people to maintain the momentum then he asked to boycott the colonial courts in favor of the local justice administered by the panchayat courts yes so far before the judicial system was introduced by the british people all the disputes are the are the any of the of civil uh, the crimes which were you know civil in nature they were administered by the local courts called the panchayat courts right this sitarama raju gives the importance to the panchayat courts instead of the justice system introduced by the british people in that way he also showed the non cooperation with the british people this is the impact of non cooperation movement on the rampa rebellion then catch me if you can that means the literally the sita ramaraju was you no know, running away that means he was plundering he was you know impacting or he was you know setting the british police stations on fire and he was going away and he was collecting all the arms which were you know put in the police stations because you know it very well that this rampa rebellion is the tribal movement tribal people they are not you know skilled to use the modern weaponry right they were using the traditional weapons like the bows and the arrows they were using the uh, no, uh, you know communication medium uh, like the whistles whistles and the bows and the arrows these were their fighting modes and the communicating modes but with this these people cannot fight with the british people who who were having the modern weaponry like the pistols and the other uh, modern you know weapons right but now to equip these tribal peoples the sitaram raju thinks that these tribal people should also be given the modern weapons how to get these modern weapons the only way was to plunder or to set the police stations on fire and the take all the weapons from the police stations this was the one way forward for the sitaram raju and he implements this thought in letter and spirit and he you know plunders the police stations after the police station and he collects all the weapons and literally he challenges the british people to catch him if they are able to catch him okay what happens hallmark of this raids are the raids on the police stations the major hallmark of this raid was that after each attack on the police station the sita ram raju would sign a letter he was writing the letter and he was signing that letter and he was putting near the police station and in those letters he was giving the details of the plunder from that station and would write the date and the time of the his attack daring the police to stop if they can so this was very very daring act by this revolutionary this created lot of tension among the british people and they announced some prize money if on the head of the sita ram raju right authorities announced the monetary reward of 10000 rupees see in the 1922 100 years back they put the reward money if the someone gives the details regarding the alluri sita ram raju that is 10000 see it is immense amount of money and for 10000 for sita ram raju and 1000 rupees each for his lieutenants like ghantam dora and mallam dora see i said these dora brothers they belong to the koya tribal they were uh, they were you know helping the sita ram raju to in the rampa rebellion these were the three prominent leaders of this rebellion this you know british raj are the the british government announced the prize money on the heads of these people see they were literally they were become their nu- nuisance or the, they have become the menace for the british government for two years literally they made the british uh, to spend the sleepless nights okay but unfortunately after two years of their glorious struggle in the year 1924 this sita ram raj was caught by the british authorities and he was publicly shot at so this was a very glorious end for this legend still after his death he lives in our hearts he inspires uh, us he inspires to live the you know uh, life of liberty he, he inspires us to maintain this liberty from the generations to come also even after 20, 125 years of this uh, struggle or 125 years after his birth still today we are you know remembering him we are you know showing our obeisances to him we are respecting him and we are revering him this is because of the his glory glorious acts because of his selfish 
act to gain the freedom for the India because of his, you know, well-natured heart or the well-nurtured heart which, you know, aimed to bring the freedom to the tribal people, okay. Because of this, we regard him as the legend and we regard him as the living legend till today also. See, in his respect, the Andhra, Andhra Pradesh government created the new district and the central government in, at the cost of 30 crore rupees, it has, you know, built one statue in the Bhimavaram district, okay. This is how we are remembering this legend but it, this is the not the only rebellion there are hundreds of tribal rebellions who, 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 which are not in news which are not known by many of us right we know major you know events like the non-cooperation movement or the Swadeshi movement or quit India movement but along with these movements there are glorious uh, such movements like the rebellion movements we have to study about all these things and we have to know the importance of these rebellions we have then only we will you know come to know what is the importance of our freedom or whatever the liberty we are enjoying today this is not the, uh, the free liberty we are enjoying this is it, this liberty or the freedom has come at the cost of the sacrifices made by such glorious unsung heroes of india right this is very very important chapter in the annals of the indian history please remember and this figure please you know study about such rebellions then only you will realize the importance of your liberty now let come let me come to one more a point the national leaders of that time the people or the leaders or the heroes of nation or national heroes who were present at that time when the legend gone he made some of the you know uh, remarks regarding that figure Mahatma Gandhi says that though I do not approve of his armed rebellion I pay my homage to his bravery and the sacrifice yes the Mahatma Gandhi he is the figure known for the non-violence he never approved the violent means to achieve the freedom but even to, in this case also though he has made supreme sacrifice he showed a lot of bravery Mahatma Gandhi ji, he did not approve his violent means of struggle, but he pays his homage to the Raju's bravery and the sacrifice. This is what said by Mahatma Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru says, Raju was one of those few heroes that could be counted on fingers. That means very, very less number of people, such, you know, revolutionary people were there during the Nehru's time. Netaji also says that Alluri was the fierce in his determination and his unparalleled courage and sacrifice for people will ensure him place in the history. Yes, these are the true words, you know, this is what we are, you know, enjoying. The Subhash Chandra Bose said he will that, that means Alluri Sitaramu Raju will find a place in history. Yes, he has got, got the right place in the history and he has got the right place in the hearts of the Indians also. Now, I would like to ask one question uh, to you. Which of the following pair or pairs is or are wrongly matched? You have to match these three pairs. One is Paika Rebellion. These are very, very important rebellions. Please remember that this Paika Rebellion is regarded, uh, this Paika Rebellion or Paika Bidroha is regarded as the first war of independence. Yes, 1857, uh, Sipai Mutiny, this is called as the officially it is called as the first war of independence but this Paika rebellion which was fought in the year 1870s so, sorry 1817 some from some quarter of the country there is a demand to declare Paika rebellion or the Paika Bidroha as the first war of independence but the central government is not in favor of this demand okay second is santal rebellion it was you know uh, in the year 1855 and 56 and munda rebellion or the munda ulgulan so this ulgulan or the great tumult this was ha happening in the year 1899 and 1900 okay these are very very important tribal uprisings uh, these uprisings as the rampa rebellion has the leader like the alluri sitarama raju all these you know rebellions also have their own leaders please match uh, these you know pairs please tell me which pair is not properly matched in this uh, question okay please you know write your answer in the comment box thank you very much for watching this video